You're listening to The LaunchCast, the podcast about leadership, business, life, and growth with me, your host, George Andriopoulos. It's like food for your ears. <sighs> Man, I need something uplifting for Brizio. Give me something good. What can we do? Ooh, good idea, good idea. This episode is sponsored by SaveTheChildren.org. Give me some good music, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Save the Children believes that every child deserves a future. In the United States and around the world, they work every day to give children a healthy start in life, the opportunity to learn, and protection from harm. They deliver lasting results for millions, I said millions, of children, including those hardest to reach. They do whatever it takes for children every day and in times of crisis. Now, Coronavirus, it's the biggest health crisis of our lifetime, and it threatens children in every way. COVID-19 has already left many children without caregivers, out of school, and exposed to violence and exploitation. And guess what? Child poverty, it is rising. With your support, they can help children in unsafe households and help support distance learning in the face of school closures. There are so many ways you can help. Check the show notes for links and a list of ways you can help. Visit savethechildren.org slash save kids and let's do some good. Fabrizio, cut the music. At this time, I'm going to ask that you fasten your seatbelts. Launch sequence. Launch sequence activated. Launch sequence activated. Five, four, three, two, one. Woo! Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the launch cast. Vacation and I still got chills. Episode 126, The Balance Phenomenon, the episode that has been 26 episodes in the making. We are in vacation mode right now. I am on the east end of Long Island, relaxing with my family. But you know the launch dad, George Andriopoulos himself, still has to come at you. With leadership, business, life, and growth right now as the beat drops. Into the black hole. Impeccable timing on that transition. God damn. What's happening, everybody? It is episode 126 of your favorite podcast on the planet, the launch cast, and we are on the east of east end of long island right now look at this beautiful view for those of you that can see video right now on the youtube channel wow this is uh this is our family's place out here on the east end here in baiting hollow beautiful baiting hollow new york um this is our relaxed spot let me tighten my microphone here here we go this is our relaxed spot come out here in the summer times with the family and chill it happens to be my daughter's birthday weekend my beautiful 12 year old daughter mia happy birthday to my little girl man where does the time go um but yeah man we are out here and i couldn't i couldn't skip an episode so i brought the equipment here you see i've got the gold mic i got the roadcaster i got the macbook pro the whole setup is here with us because we are going to be talking today amongst ourselves no guests today we're talking about the balance phenomenon. This is something that for me has been a big theme in my growth as a leader, my growth as a man, my growth as a human being. It's something that I take into account every day when I hold myself accountable at the end of the day for my actions, for my behavior, for my leadership. And I make sure that the balance remains in my life. And so I've, I've talked about this a little bit throughout our interviews before. And this is going to be a more in-depth dive into what the balance phenomenon means. Um, and we need it right now, right? As leaders, as human beings, there's some crazy stuff going on out there. 
It is, it is a world full of turmoil right now. We are still in quarantine. This is another week of quarantine, which is completely insane. But, you know, we're getting through it. We're starting to see a reopening. Businesses are starting to come back finally, very slowly. It's going to be a long time before we get to normal. But particularly this week, we are seeing a shift in the balance yet again with the death of George Floyd, the murder, I should say, of George Floyd. Today, that's not something I'm, I'm going to get into uh, heavily because we are hopefully planning a very special episode where we're going to bring a panel on to discuss this, discuss how we can move forward as leaders and how to create some change because ultimately that's what's needed to get past this. We need to change the way things work in this world, in this country. And so the balance phenomenon, the balance phenomenon for those that have either taken my leadership course, the leadership experience, or those that have taken a dive into their own lives introspectively that have sat and talked about how to make themselves better, you know, how to balance out the craziness in our lives, how to balance the business owner, the worker, the family member, the spouse, the father, the son, the brother, the sister, the wife. How do we stand as strong leaders while giving everything to those that deserve that leadership from us? I use this analogy all the time, probably ad nauseum. I talk about this moment of balance that I recognized in my life. I talk about this moment where everything sort of clicked. Everything came together in order to create a time period in my life where it was no longer turbulence. It was no longer tumultuous times. It was no longer a roller coaster. It wasn't up and down. It wasn't drama and calm, bad or good. It was just level. It was a, a, a place where everything sort of balanced out. And it's so hard to describe how this happened for me because I think it was just like a light bulb moment for me, right? Something I call a spark moment. But the analogy that I use all the time is the balance phenomenon for me if you're a Star Wars fan, is the moment that Luke Skywalker understood the Force. He learned the Force. It was the moment in the Matrix where Neo got the Matrix, dodging bullets, right? It was that moment where everything just clicks and you become your full potential everywhere, not just in one area of your life, but everywhere. For me, I remember thinking back when everything started shifting for me. You know, I went through a big change nine or 10 years ago, a big shift in my life where I had to sort of reassess, you know, what was important to me. I was going through a divorce. Uh, I was trying to be the best father I could to my kids. I was trying to find my way again in my professional life, my personal life, uh, with my interpersonal relationships with friends. And there was a time where I just had to kind of focus on rebuilding that man. And then once I felt like all those different areas were sort of back to a normal level, I jumped back into my professional life, which is so important to me as a leader. And when everything sort of started picking up speed, right? It was like that, that, when you're on a bike and you're downhill and all of a sudden you're just boom, going like a rocket ship. Everything is flying like at the speed of light for me. And not only am I picking up responsibilities, you know, within my professional life with my company that I started, but now I'm, I'm increasing my capacity. I, I have time now for the charitable stuff. I have time to give back. I have time to be a resource in my community. I have time to be a mentor to others. I have time to do so many more things, but at the same time, I'm trying to be a partner to my partner. I'm trying to be a father to my kids. 
trying to be a family member to all my family. And as those responsibilities grew, you start getting stretched really thin, you know? You start getting stretched really, really thin. And all of a sudden, there are times where you feel like you're pulling at the seams, where although you've increased your capacity and you're so much better at, I guess, taking on more roles, putting on more hats, there's a point where you start to dilute how good you are in those roles. And so this is a, a moment within my professional life that I felt and my personal life that I was starting to get stretched way too thin. I was taking on a lot, although I knew overall that it wasn't too much, if that makes sense. Like it was a lot, but it wasn't an insane amount that I was taking on. And... I knew that there was something missing personally. Like what was I doing wrong where this wasn't all balancing out? How come I couldn't be as good at all of these things? You know, I'm a multitasker. I should be able to, to be good at, at a hundred different things, right? Or so we think. And so I realized at the time that I was wearing all these different hats as sort of different personas, if that makes sense. Like, in my business, I'm one guy. You know, I'm I'm the CEO, I'm the boss at Launchpad 516. And then in my community as, you know, a community leader that's either working with the school district or working, you know, with my town to help better my town or, or in my charitable endeavors, you know, I'm, I'm that guy there. And of course, there's a certain time, um, uh, time dedication that you have to give to to all of these different things that you're you're a part of, and then you know of course there's the most important part, which is my family. You have my kids. I'm I'm running around at the especially at the time class dad for all for all my both of my kids classes. I'm I'm coaching basketball teams. I'm you know uh, field trips and class parties, and of course have to make time for for my partner, which is you know. At the time, my partner and then my wife, uh, Colleen, you know, you still have to be a good boyfriend, a good fiance, a good husband. Um, and it was a lot. And I felt like I wasn't great at any of them anymore because I was doing so many things. And suddenly I made the realization that I didn't have to be different people within these roles and Maybe it was just the right timing for me because I was working through a lot of personal stuff that I was trying to grow from, you know, from that dude that I used to be years ago. And I kind of realized like, hey, I had a I had a mask on all these years, you know, with this sort of shithead persona that I had. Maybe maybe it's just time to take the mask off. Maybe I'm so used to wearing this mask, putting a different hat on in no matter what role that I'm in, maybe that's the problem. Maybe if I just take all the masks off and I'm just George in all of these situations, maybe that'll help me to get better at it, become a better father, become a better husband, become a better boss, become a better community leader. Maybe if I'm transparent and authentic and honest with everybody that, hey, that's me, the dad, but that's also me, the husband. And that's also me, the business owner. And that's also me, the community leader. And that's also me, the charitable stuff. Maybe all of these can be just different shades of the same person. And that if everybody knows, if you go in and communicate and everybody has their correct expectations and they know what to expect, they know what the deal is going in. Maybe if that's the case, then maybe it won't be as hard, right? Maybe if I'm not trying to present the perfect husband persona at home that nothing comes before, before family, right? Which is really one of the lines for me. That's, that's really the case now. But, hey, you know what? You have a late meeting. Things happen. 
something important comes up at work, you're going to be a few minutes late. This kind of stuff is unavoidable. But when you work in absolutes and you say, no, I won't take a late meeting because of my family. Well, guess what? I'm sure that if you managed and balanced correctly and your family was well aware that you are the person that never lets anything come before family, but hey, a meeting came up, you know, do we have to lose that potential client because I'm going to be 20 minutes late for dinner with my family? No, not if the expectations are there with your family. The same way that at work, if you have something important going on with a client, but your kid has their spring concert at school and you have to run out between 12 o'clock and 1.30 to go watch your kids sing in, in chorus at the concert and you have to miss a client meeting, if you've been there for that client as that leader, as that dependable, reliable leader, and they know what you're about, they know you're a family person and that this is very important and then you'll make sure to make up that work for them and that they're still a priority, but hey, my kids are my first priority, they'll understand. And so I think there was a short period of sort of testing out this theory for me the balance phenomenon, but it worked like right away. And then it was, whether it was over a couple of days, a couple of weeks, whatever the case was, I swear it was just this light bulb. I was a Jedi. Like I got it. I totally finally understood at that point. I was able to now be what everybody else needed from me while being honest with them about it. And that in turn was so satisfying for me. Such a shift for me to be able to be honest to everybody, all these directions that I'm being pulled. And it just made me better at those things. It helped with my priorities. It helped with my scheduling. It helped with my focus tremendously. Now, the process to get there, man, that was tough. And honestly, it's not something that I'm going to go into in super detail here because, hey, I have a coaching class, the leadership experience. That's what that thing's about. Week five is the balance phenomenon. It's one of the biggest weeks of the program. This episode is sponsored by the June 2020 cohort of the Leadership Experience, a coaching masterclass hosted by yours truly, the launch dad himself, George Andriopoulos. I am bringing you yet another cohort of our six-week intensive masterclass on leadership. You will find your purpose, you will carry it through into your personal mission statement, and you will use that mission statement to change the game. And that's what this is all about. Now, we still have our three add-on tracks, our career leader track, our entrepreneur track, and our popular public thought leader track for speakers, writers, social influencers, you know the deal, but guess what? We have added a fourth add-on track, and it is our most robust track yet. The podcast experience track, which is co-developed and co-taught by my man, Mark Cordone from The Joy Revolution, from The Golden Mike Podcast. We have teamed up into the super friends of podcasting, and we are about to break down some walls and teach our leaders how to build a podcast of their own. But it is not just the technical stuff. No, 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 no. This is much deeper. It is the deep dive into interviewing, into guest relations, into reaching your audience, into using your leadership to carry your mission through into your podcast message. Let's do this. The cohort starts June 1st. Registration is open. TheLeadershipExp.com. Get there. Tell them I sent you. But I wanted to be honest with you because honestly, I gave you the entire fundamentals of what that class is about in this episode. In essence, right? The steps to get there, of course, that's something we'd have to go through in detail together or at least how I got there, which is how I run my coaching class. But the fundamentals are there. Understanding that you have to create that balance and somehow include authenticity within that balance 
That's the secret right there. That's the secret sauce. Now, here's the biggest secret with this. And this one's free of charge. Balance phenomenon does not last. That does not last at all. I am telling you right now, you will have to make sacrifices. Your family will have to make sacrifices. Your job will have to make sacrifices. Everybody in your tribe will have to make sacrifices in order to help each other keep the balance. Case in point. This is my daughter's birthday weekend. My daughter's birthday was a couple of days ago. Her one wish for her birthday was to come out east to the house and celebrate her birthday here and just chill for the weekend. Enjoy the views. Walk down the mountain to the beach there. Climb the dunes. And just enjoy the family. That was her wish. And man, I knew from the second she asked me that she was going to get that wish. Not a big ask, right? But I still had things to do too, work-wise. I have a new cohort of the leadership experience that launches this coming week, the week of June 1st, which is two days away. That's when the cohort launches. I have work to do for my company. I have emails to send. I have an episode of the LaunchCast to record, produce, edit, and post. That's hours of work. Hours of work. And so we created little sacrifices. Right? The kids are upstairs right now in their room, chilling out. They wanted some downtime this morning. Guess what? I brought the roadcaster, the mics, the headphones, the whole deal. I brought it all out here in a duffel bag. I set up shop on the on the deck, giving you guys a beautiful view of the Long Island Sound behind me. And I'm recording. That was a sacrifice. Do I want to be recording right now this second during this family weekend? No, of course not. Did I give my family that expectation going into this weekend? Yeah. Absolutely. They knew the deal, and they were cool with it. And if they weren't cool with it, we would have talked about it. And if it was non-negotiable, I would have worked something out. But if it was non-negotiable for me as well, we would have worked it out as well. That's the balance. That's how we bring that balance to the table. Now, that balance, that is a struggle. That is a struggle. I am telling you right now, we're 26 episodes deep. I have talked to over 20 leaders on this show i've learned so much from them about their unconventional journeys everything that they have gone through to get to the points where they are today which is damn strong leadership within their communities guess what not one of them agreed on the balance question do you have balance most of the time the answer was, no, but I'm getting there. You're never going to get there. <laughs> Truly, I do feel that I have balance. I don't feel that I've mastered balance. I don't feel like I've attained this thing called balance, and then I no longer have to maintain it. That's not how balance works. Balance is ba the, the nature of the word. The definition of balance is that you have to keep balancing because the scales will tip in either direction once in a while. And you have to make sure that not only do you work to maintain that balance, but that you're cognizant enough to notice the scales tipping. And that is the most difficult part of the balance phenomenon. That is the most difficult part because it is so easy to not be cognizant of the scales tipping. It is so easy to fall asleep at the wheel in life. When we get into our routines, we go through our day-to-days, we're working, we're loving at home, we go to sleep, wake up, and repeat. It's so easy to fall asleep at the wheel. And so communication there is so key. Ask your tribe once in a while if you're doing a good job. Guys, am I maintaining balance here? Anything I could work on? It's almost like a... a personal review that they're doing of you yeah yeah dad you're maintaining balance no dad 
I feel a little neglected these past few weeks. All right, guys, let's fix that. Or everything's great at home, and then work says, no, boss, something's got to change. We've taken on too much. We're not getting the support we need from you. Okay, let's fix that. So it's a constant balancing act. It sucks because it's the hardest part of working to perfect your life, working to be the leader that you know that you can be. It is the hardest part for sure. But the most rewarding when you figure it out, when you figure out that balance, when you figure out how to, how to create this thing in your life, this force that is just constantly working on its own to balance everything out because that it really is that it's when you create the balance, it does have an autopilot mode that works on its own to sort of fix things because of the expectations, because of the communications that you've delivered that sets an invisible boundary that your tribe knows about. And so it does work on its own because at certain points, if people are very aware of what your absolute boundaries are, your non-starters, your no-goes, your do not pass go, go directly to jail, do not collect $200, those lines, when your tribe knows what those lines are, they will tend to not cross them. They will learn to not cross those boundaries. And so it's sort of doing the job for you. And then whether they cross the boundaries or you cross the boundaries, you just have to be cognizant enough to find your way back. That's all. And if you're constantly maintaining that balance, then the trip back to normalcy, to balance, is not that far. Now, I want to talk about this briefly in the setting of the world today. And I'll use my situation to sort of parallel this for people. But for 75, 80 days, however long this quarantine has been, everything has changed. Everything has changed. Work has changed. Family has changed. School has changed. The world has changed. Communication has changed. I have to homeschool my kids right now along with their mom. And we're doing our best. And it's not always perfect, but hey, we're doing our best at it. That's tough. And when they're home and I have to work, it kills me to be working while they're here. You know, generally it's, hey, you're at school. I'm at the office. That's work time. When we're home together, that's our time. And so it's. It's a very weird dynamic for them to be home and not have that reflex to immediately just be with them and spend time with them. That's hard, but that's something that I had to learn to shift during this time. Work is strange right now. You know, a lot of us cannot work with my company. I've been blessed to be able to still run my company from home. We haven't taken too much of a hit, thank goodness, but we have taken a hit. When you look at the other things I do, my public speaking and all that stuff, that's, that's gone right now at the moment. Everything I had for the last few months has been canceled. Now we're starting to come out of this. And so I think we've all been working for the last almost three months to sort of develop a new balance that makes this work for us. But... When we go back, do we go back to how it was? Is it easy for the balance to shift back, for the equilibrium to go back to exactly how it was? Or is that even a possibility? We have to take inventory of all of this as we transition back to normalcy after the quarantine ends. We have to take inventory to make sure that we're going to be okay as we continue and that we create a new balance for the new normal until everything is back to complete normal, which, hey, whether that even happens or not, who knows, but we hope. And so you have a situation like this, which, was, which for us is probably a once-in-a-lifetime deal, I, I would hope, I would imagine. 
now you take into account the other stuff that happens to shift the balance in the world again. I mentioned before the murder of George Floyd. Man, has the balance been shifted again. The conversations happening on social media, although all necessary, opinions upon opinions upon opinions. By the way, almost every single one of them right. You can't gauge an opinion, but at the same time, it's how somebody feels, it's how a human being feels. And so whether you agree with it or not, every opinion in its essence is right for that person. But there has to be leadership that steps up in order to create what normal is going to look like moving forward from this incident. And again, not jumping too deep into this because we're going to do a whole special on this. The scales are constantly shifting, whether you look at it in a macro way with the quarantine, with the George Floyd situation, or at the macro or at the micro level, we can talk about our own lives, which in, in the grand scheme of things is a tiny little piece, a tiny little fleck in the world, our lives. What's, what's the significance of my life in this entire planet, right? To billions of other people. It's significant to me, but not in the grand scheme of the world. And so we have to find that balance on a micro level and keep working for that balance as we look to the macro level. One person's balance does not balance the macro. But if enough people start to balance within the micro, they start to gain some traction in the macro level. They start to shift. Now, what that shift means, that's for another episode. In terms of the quarantine, what it means... It's working to get back to normal. Now, what normal means for us, I don't know. That's something we'll decide as a whole. But the balance phenomenon is real. We need to take stock and realize that this is something that is very real in our lives. And we have to put the work in to maintain this balance or else we will have no growth we will have no change. We will have no forward progress. And that's just not something that for me, I'm willing to sacrifice on. I need progress in my life. I need growth in my life. I'm looking at the camera and it's out of focus, which is annoying the shit out of me. But hey, what are you going to do? There we go. Back in focus. camera just balanced itself out. Do you see what I'm saying here, guys? Come on, man. I'm a wise dude. You got to listen to me once in a while. I'm not always right, but sometimes I get it. You know what I mean? And so there's your balance phenomenon episode, kids. Right now, I'm here in this beautiful setting to rebalance. Not only is this my daughter's birthday weekend, but guess what? I've been working my tail off for the last three months. You would think that when I started working from home and I had to move not only my business to my house temporarily, but my show, my coaching, my thought leadership, all of it had to move home. And shit was tough, man. Somehow I, I went from thinking that I would be free for 90% of the day to now being busy 90% of the day. Somehow, I'm still trying to figure out how this happened, but this is a this is a good thing overall. But I'm burnt out. This quarantine has burnt me out. <laughs> I've been stuck in my house, although I I so I am so appreciative of this time home with my wife, with my kids. My my wife is expecting we're having a uh a little our little baby in August in late August and so to have this time alone with her at home as she goes through this process of of being pregnant I'll never get this back and so I'm so thankful to be able to have this opportunity but at the same time right we're stuck home we can't go out to dinner we can't see friends we can't have human interaction this has been tough and on top of that that I've been working my 
balls off. I'm exhausted. And so right now, this weekend, this is a recharge. This is a rebalance happening right now, this weekend. You are witnessing the rebalance. After I hit end on this recording, I'm done. I'm taking these headphones off. I'm taking these glasses off. I'm going to chill. I'm going to make some lunch. I'm going to have some laughs with my kids. We're going to go back to enjoying ourselves because that's balance. So I want to thank you guys for joining me today. Episode 126 of the Balance Phenomenon. Keep your eyes and ears peeled for a very special episode coming soon. I don't know if it's next week or the week after, but we will be talking about George Floyd. We will be talking with other leaders about how to move forward and how to create some change right now. Stay tuned for an incredible panel. It's coming soon. I want to thank you guys. I want you guys to recharge, rebalance. We'll see you next week, guys. Launch sequence terminated. Into the black hole. Thanks for listening to the LaunchCast today. Please make sure to subscribe to this feed wherever podcasts are available. Follow me, George Andriopoulos, at Launchpad CEO on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And make sure to visit our website, guys, thelaunchcast.com. Looking forward to the next episode. See you soon, guys.